panel is huge. There are 13 people today on the panel. Yep. I know a lot of you have a lot of questions. Uh, we're going to bring everybody out one by one. I'm going to start it off, and then when we're ready to go to audience questions, we are going to make an organized single file line here in the middle with respect to people that are still seating. So try not to block their path. So I'm going to bring the cast out. Are you ready for this? Okay. Someone near and dear to my heart, one of my favorite characters in the show, our narrator, our giant, our fireman, Mr. Woo. Carl Stricken. so special. We have Andrea Watrus, Amy Shields, and Giselle Demir.
he's as sweet as he is scary as hell. Yeah. But he's the most charming man I've ever met. Mr. Ray Wise, Leland yeah. Paul. just an overnight success and when this was happening when you guys were just shooting your next gig and this became what it had become fast uh, in your lives watching that happen what was that experience like for you just as it was happening did you gather with friends and watch along with everybody else had you already seen uh, ahead of there um, what was your experience for each person uh, as the show just grew Uh, well, I, I was already a big fan, uh, and I don't think I've ever been as nervous uh, coming on the set as I was for Three Keeps. And it was also the first time I met David Lynch, uh, because I had only seen the casting director before. And he walked up to me and shook my hand and said, Everything is going to be peachy keen. <laughs> that was the first time I ever heard the expression. <laughs> um, but they made us go to the, these different bars to watch the show all the time, and so I never saw it, really. I <laughs> um, have to uh, watch it soon. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I had people over to watch like the first, I think the first few episodes, I had like uh, friends and family and stuff like that over at my house. And uh, I remember, uh, you know, watching that, the dream sequence from I think the second episode of the first season. And, you know, us guys didn't know anything about the Red Room or anything. <laughs> so that was, when I saw that, I was just like, man, that, that might be one of the best things I've ever seen on television ever in my life. <laughs> 
house where you and your girlfriend broke the bed. <laughs> <laughs> That shit was probably at Ikea, so... <laughs> well, I came in, in second season, and uh, I was completely obsessed with the show, and so intimidated. I was so excited when I got the audition, and um, the women were the most beautiful women I've ever seen on the show, and I was like, how am I going to get on the show? And it was written that she was supposed to be so beautiful and that the men were just falling at her feet. I'm like, how am I going to get on the show? So I decided to make on a Southern. It wasn't written that way. And, um, and I thought, well, it's going to work or it's not. And it worked and I was so excited. <laughs> and it was an absolute dream come true. I just couldn't believe I was a part of this incredible show. And, and um, yeah, I just, I, I got on the show and I thought, oh, this is going to be, this is going to last forever. I can't believe I'm part of this. <laughs> and then it was, I, I got on and then it ended. <laughs> <laughs> what, am, I, am I cursed? <laughs> 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 I was cursed. <laughs> and then Ray and I worked together so many times, it's been so great. Yeah. Like, anyway. <laughs> um, I, I got a call from my agent, that, you know, and, and sent this script over called Northwest Passage. And uh, I read it through and I liked it a lot. And uh, they set me up with a meeting with, uh, with David Lynch. And uh, so I went into the meeting with David thinking I was gonna maybe read for the sheriff, Sheriff Truman. Oh. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I was all set to maybe play Sheriff Truman. And then when I found out after our little meeting, we talked about our first cars with, uh, his was a Volkswagen, I think, and anyway. Uh, and then, and then um, a couple of days later, I got the call and he was interested in me playing Leland Palmer and I had to go back to the script. And, look to see who Leland was again. <laughs> and, and, I, and I looked at the first scene and, uh, you know, I find out my daughter's dead and I start crying. And, and then I go to the morgue and identify her body and I start crying again. And, <laughs> and then I, I'm in her room and the police are searching for her diary and other things and I'm crying again on the <laughs> I said, all this guy does is cry. <laughs> And then, so the light went on in my head, I'm gonna have to find different levels of crying, <laughs> of mourning for my daughter. And uh, I, had, I had no idea what was to come, believe me. You did it right. Well, you, you found all of those. <laughs> I'd like to see that audition tape. That would be sort of fun. <laughs> we would all have those if we all auditioned for other characters. What might that be like? That would be fun. Uh, well, um, uh, David spoke to me about the script. And you're right, it was called Northwest Passage, initially, originally. And he had written it with Mark Frost. And I think in the beginning, I was David's guy for Cooper. I think this, that was going to be it. Un, kind of unspoken, and then, but Mark was the was uh, the wild card in it, and so I had to have a uh, had lunch with Mark, so he could meet me actually, and just he so he could be on board with the idea of me playing Dale Cooper. So we went to the Border Grill in Los Angeles, um, sat down, had a very nice lunch, and uh, I guess I convinced him because uh, the next day all we were all systems go. So uh, that's how I. I came aboard. So, Border Grill, Mark Frost lunch. <laughs> Dale Cooper, there you go. Um, I was living in Seattle at the time, and I just got a call that David was in town, and there was this whole secret, mysterious thing. And would I go meet him to um, play a dead girl? <laughs> and I said, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So um, that was it. I just he asked if I, if I could be wrapped in plastic and put in cold water and painted gray. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> that's how it happened. Hi. Um, for me, it just was a 
another audition, but only with a genius this time. Um, and making a long story short, somebody had said to me as a new young actress, when you go meet directors, be yourself. Don't think that you have to put on a show or behave a certain way. If you're kind of bitchy or you have a sense of humor, they've all heard this boring story. So whoever you are, be that person. Well, I was kind of shy when I first met people, and then it's David Lynch. I'm like, do I do this? You know? <laughs> and so I was myself, and he just talked a lot and asked a lot of questions. And oh, you the sweet pea. <laughs> and, um, and then, so I left, and I thought it went okay. The casting director yelled at my manager and said I should have been more positive. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, well, that didn't work. Um, they called a week later and said he's writing you a role. And so there was this, this little role that I was so grateful to get, like, beyond. And then I fell in love with, especially, Audrey fell in love, especially. <laughs> I cried my eyes out when I saw him a few days ago. <laughs> um, so I was uh, new to Hollywood. I was only 17, 18, 17. Uh, and I was filming the pilot to Baywatch. <laughs> and uh, I was supposed to go down. I had gone in for Joanna Ray, our incredible casting director a bunch of times on a bunch of different stuff, and she's very particular who she takes uh, to David. And um, so I was supposed to go down and, and meet David, and I only knew David from Blue Velvet and this very strange film, Dune. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay, so that guy's doing TV? That's weird. <laughs> um, but I, so, uh, and I was super late on set, and I was super worried that I wasn't gonna make it, but they waited, and I read with Eric, uh, Joanna's son, and um, I read for Lara Flynn Boyle's part, Donna, and, um, and we read, and it was great, but sort of like at the end of the meeting, David just said, do you want to do a TV show with me? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, that's, that's history. It's, and we, I think one of the questions too was like, did you, were you aware of it? As it was happening, as it was happening how was that experience? And I was wasn't, I wasn't at all. Like I watched with friends at home and, you know, talked to my family and stuff, but it wasn't until like the trip to New York for Upfronts that it was all of a sudden like, an entire Manhattan was just surrounding us. We're just like, whoa. Uh, and, then, and then the invitation for um, uh, Phil Donahue, and I was like, oh, we made it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think by the we came around, we knew what big of a deal it was, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, they didn't tell me what I was auditioning for, but they did say it was a Showtime revival, so uh, I'm a massive Twin Peaks fan, and I did know Showtime was doing a Twin Peaks revival, so I thought just in case that's what it is, I'll wear my, what I call my Laura Palmer sweater, and make sure to mention it from the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> and uh, it worked, so. <laughs> Thanks so much for inviting me along with all these amazing original cast members, it's a real honor. Um, how I ended up getting involved was ages ago, over a decade ago, I was living in London and my agent called me to say, this casting director Joanna Ray is in town and she's requested to meet you. So I looked up her resume and I'm like, how, how has she heard of me? So I go in and, and she says all these really wonderful things, she's like, I've got this star beside your name, I've wanted to meet you for a very long time, and I'm finally in London, and I said, are you sure you're the right person? <laughs> Why? But it turns out that she um, had seen a screen test I did for Randall Wallace, which the film never went. And, uh, she said, Amy, if you ever come to LA, I'd really love to introduce you to David. I just think you're perfect to, to collaborate with him on something. So then I moved to, to LA some years later and I called her up and was like, hey Joe, I'm here. <laughs> and she looked after me. Um, and then I met David and candy came about. But as you were saying, the second part of the question, did I know it was gonna change anything? Well, 
I don't really come into it until episode 10 and I had no idea what episodes I was going to be in and I was mortified because I had done a bunch of press about working with him. <laughs> and every week I was watching it with my two pals going, oh my god, I'm not in this show, I'm so embarrassed, I'm so embarrassed, I'm so embarrassed. Um, and then I, I remember the first episode that I'm properly in, I think it's 10 or 11, I decided just not to watch it. <laughs> in London and I woke up to my phone exploding and oh and one of the other cast members had sent me a photo of me walking into the office and I thought, oh my god, thank god. At least my mom will be happy now. <laughs> Um, my experience is similar to Giselle's, where I got the audition, and instead of reading anything, the audition was, tell me about yourself, which at the time I'd never heard of, but <laughs> <laughs> now, now I go, oh, I see, because David Lynch doesn't actually cast actors, he casts people, he wants to see how you talk, how your face moves, he's really specific. And when I got to set, it was the most surreal experience. It's six years later, and it's still the most surreal experience. And I feel so grateful to be up here with all these people that I look up to. And I love these two girls. Yeah. <laughs> one, of, uh, one of the most effective characters in the show is, is the music by Angela Vidal Menti. And my question for anyone that wants to answer is dur during this scene or during the shooting of the show, before takes, did David, especially, uh, well, well, sorry, it's me. <laughs> I'm just like, oh my god, something's happening. Um, but Sherilyn, especially, uh, I know every time we see Audrey, there's a theme and a rhythm to the scene, and uh, did David play any of the music on set? He, he didn't, except for me. In the second episode, he rewrote that whole scene in the coffee shop, and then said, "And you're going to dance at the end." And I was like, "Why?" <laughs> I was like, "I'm just going to give him for dance." And he said, "Because we wrote you a song and it's on your theme, and you're just going to groove." And you're like, I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> I actually called my teacher. I was so nervous because, like, you know, you come all prepared. I'm like, "What do I do?" Listen to David Lynch, okay? <laughs> Just listen and do it. Yeah, the, the music's so iconic, and I know Dana uh, in The Return, when you first walk in, you know, it's Deputy Bobby Briggs, and, uh, and all of us are surprised because uh, you know Bobby Phil again. But anyway, you know, <laughs> when you see uh, Laura's picture, you start to cry. Uh, I don't, I'm assuming all of us in the room felt this. I mean, that was a, a punch in that uh, your reaction. Did David just kind of cry, or was it more of just, did it hit you personally as, wow, we're back on this show, it's been 25 uh, years. It was just written that way, and then I said this, I told a bunch of people today, and I, I did, <laughs> but it was just written that way, it was like Bobby walks into the office, he sees a picture of Laura Palmer on the table, and Bobby cries, and that was it, and I just, just had to try and not mess it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kyle, in the return, uh, this had to be a wonderful actor's playground for you tackling the three very different uh, roles in the show. How exciting was this to not only come back to the show but think, oh, David, you, you have me doing everything under the sun in this, in this room. Exciting? Uh, <laughs> How much <laughs> <you're> sure? Exciting. <laughs> Frightening, scary. Um, yeah, it was a gift that David gave to me. Um, and, you know, I've been doing this for a while, and I know I feel pretty capable. I can sort of handle anything that comes along, except when I read Mr. C, I said, well, I've never done anything like this, and i got to find this, this person in, in me. And I was like, and if I don't find it, if it doesn't, I knew if it didn't work, the show wasn't going to work. So, a <laughs> little pressure. <laughs> but I had an ace and hole. <clears throat> I was working with David Lynch. <laughs> so, um, together we, we basically built Mr. C. Um, uh, actors will know from the outside in we actually built him. And, uh, and then that created, of course, an interior life, um, starting with just his look, with that jacket, 
and that really just wrong hair. <laughs> that was so perfect. Um, down to the little detail of the pin in the back. I mean, there was, everything was very, very specific and thought through. Um, and then when we added um, a little bit of a kind of a dirt effect on his face, that just sort of sold it for me. I was like, all right. When I, when I look at that, I'm like, that's it. And then I, I, we, we added also, I think it was my suggestion, I said, this guy's a shark. And I said, I think that his eyes have got, there's no oh, life yeah. there. So that I said, let's put a little um, contact in and just uh, help that. And, uh, and that also sort of moved the character closer to what I wanted. It gives him also an otherworldly kind of quality, which I thought was important. Um, so that was, and that was David and I kind of working together. And then Ducky was just, uh, <laughs> There was, a, I, there was an exercise that I did in school years ago when I was in training, and it was uh, called Object Discovery. And uh, so it's, uh, it's as if you're seeing something for the first time and you, don't, you have no idea what it is or what it does. It's like a baby. You're a baby, basically. Um, until you sort of, some, something about it attracts, attracts you and you interact with it, and that was pretty much Dougie. Um, so it was just finding that every day with David, which was a lot of fun. Um, and then the goal for me was always to try to make him laugh on every take. So whenever I did a study, my goal was to make David break out because <laughs> um, the other thing about Dougie was it took a lot of courage, I found, to be so still and to not do anything. Because as actors, we like to do stuff, you know, at least I do. I like to fill the moment. And this is like, man, eh, no fill in the moment. You just. <laughs> You're there, and people are looking at you, and if they're uncomfortable, and you're like, that's just the way it goes. <laughs> so I took a lot of courage to try and do that. And then um, finally, when we got to Cooper, I didn't consciously think about what he might be like 25 years later. I just said, I'm different. He'll be different. So, and I just went into it with the same kind of personality, I guess, as I had with the first guy. So, uh, and, that, and it came out as it came out, so. The sort of industry process, and then there were some little other little fun pieces along the way. The f um, fat Dougie was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Just to be able to pat your belly like that was really fun. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. So. Well, incredible performance. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I uh, cannot say the incredible performance without uh, Cheryl, especially. Let's specifically point out when, when on the evening Maddie was killed. And on network TV, that scene, which had to be the scariest scene ever aired on network TV, uh, that day, I know, was not a happy day. David, from what I'm told, is filled with the, the love and family that he brings to the set. Is that vital, especially on a day like that where you have to scream all day, you have to go through this all day. From what I understand, there were three different ways of shooting that scene, three different killers, to kind of throw off any spoilers that may happen. Uh, getting through that, how did David, the feel of David that he brings to set, like did, did that, the mental place, how easy is that and how hard is that to shut off when you go home? Your performance is incredible. Well, I was really tired <laughs> at the end of that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, the, those days just, they take a lot of focus because it has to be really choreographed and I was working with great actors. So um, I was in good hands and you know, you, you just know those days are what they are, and you do them, and you focus on what the stunt people tell you to do, and be safe, and you take the emotional journey, and trust the people that you're working with. Yeah, she was. Oh. <laughs> I don't think she is. <laughs> no, she was actually, uh, she was killed by three different people that day by me, Leland, by uh, Ben Horn, and by Bob, Frank Silva. Because uh, David didn't want even the crew to know who the real killer of Laura Palmer was. And so she, she had to go through having her face smashed into the wall by three different people. And, uh, and it was, I remember it was a long day, 12, 14 hours, I think. 
and you know, we all needed a massage afterwards, you know, <laughs> to wind down. But yeah, it was, uh, it was quite an experience. I have a follow-up question. <laughs> so did you know who, so you just had to give it everything for oh, all three versions? Oh, that day, I did know, did, was it the day before that we found out? It was only like the day before, right? I think it was, it was only the, yeah, the day before. Yeah, it was the, the day before, yeah. So it was, it was right, hard for It was right after the Emmys, in which we didn't win any. We were up for 14 Emmys and we didn't win it. Oh, L.A. Law was the big show that year. <laughs> and where is that now? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Or should I? Yes, yes, yes. The day before, I got, I, I got a message from, uh, that David wanted to see me up in this room in our, in our production facility, and I came into the room, and it was rather dark. I, th I think there was a lava lamp in the corner. <laughs> and, and, and David and Mark were sitting cross-legged on the floor, and Richard Beamer and myself and Cheryl we all came in and we all got down the floor, cross-legged, and, and David looked at me and he reached out and touched my knee and he said, Ray, it's you, it's always been you. jail or be killed or whatever and I did not want that to happen but then David assuaged my feelings by saying I would die in Cooper's arms <laughs> and he would read the Tibetan book of the dead over me and I would look down that long tunnel and see the white light and my daughter Laura would be at the end of it with her arms outstretched to me and she would forgive me Aww. Aww. <sighs> He painted such a picture that I no longer felt badly about leaving the show. And then I hoped I could come back in the third season. <laughs> <laughs> but that's another story. <laughs> um, can I say, I've never told you this, but you're Shirley, or anyone actually, ever, but for some reason, I was called in to work that day, and I was there the entire day. And I watched from a little crack in the fireplace. <laughs> I watched you shoot all three of those scenes. Wow. And I had... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when I got home that night, I never did work. I don't know why I was called in to work. There was no reason, there was nothing I was mi missing, no interview that the producer didn't want me to do, so he called me into work. So I went home and just sat on my back porch like in a stupor, because I couldn't tell anybody. <laughs> and I've never told anybody this, but I remember saying out loud, Ray should win an Emmy, Shirley yeah. should win an Emmy. No, what's bigger than an Emmy? And I just, I was so impressed. It was so frightening. Mm -hmm. uh, it was really, it was crazy. <laughs> We are, I know a lot of you have questions, so we're going to line up in just a sec. But first, because we just ended on kind of a downer, my bad. <laughs> right. uh, you know, my friend Ray, he, what people don't know is at night, he sneaks out and he goes to the jazz club and he croons for people and he's amazing. And that's made up, but he does have an amazing voice. And I think before we do audience questions, I think Ray should sing us out of the dark into the light to lead up to our audience questions. What do we think? Can you give us a little bit of That's my friend. I'm sorry, I can't. Oh. 
before I ever attended his show, I had fear. Like, is it safe? Is <laughs> it <So> stupid, <laughs> right? All these different things. And then it's become really connecting and looking at people's eyes and sharing on a deep level. And people have given me their perspective of what what touched them and how what it meant to them. And you can't ask for more than that as an actor. You know, that's what you do is to tell stories. So God bless all of you. We love all of you. As a newbie, I just want to thank you guys for welcoming us so warmly. You know, it's intimidating enough coming on someone else's show, never mind the greatest show that's ever been. <laughs> and between the cast and the fans, you guys have been so welcoming. You're brainiacs, you're genius, you're beautiful, you're fun, you're just everything an actor could hope for. So thank you. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of the show and have so many questions and the only thing that comes to mind is Nomi's got heat. So I wanted to ask Mr. McLaughlin, when you were shooting Showgirls, was there a <laughs> where you thought I might not get an Oscar? That wasn't me. That wasn't me. <laughs> I don't know who it was, but it wasn't me. <laughs> Well, that was a fun adventure. It was a detour. With Mr. Steve. Oh, yeah. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, hello, thank you for being here. Um, Miss Lee, the show definitely has a lot of you know, strange, strange and surreal moments, and there's definitely a few red herrings. Um, was there ever a point before finding out who killed Laura Palmer? That you really, you know, had your own kind of ideas or uh, inflection on, on who that may be, or what you kind of thought you would see in the future. Oh yeah, I had my ideas of who I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> so sweet. Um, all along. Uh, no, no. Yeah, I wanted it to be anybody else. <laughs> No. <laughs> Everybody asked. I mean, I like asked right away. It's not Audrey, is it? You know? <laughs> <laughs> he just wouldn't tell. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much. Hello. Um, it's like seeing all my favorite people ever. <laughs> Some of my first part friends. <laughs> um, I have a question, it's kind of for um, Miss Fenn, but um, some of the characters are such lovable characters, Cooper and Audrey, and then such horrible things happen to you guys. <laughs> and particularly, I think of particularly uh, Miss uh, Audrey Horn. Um, what was it like hearing about the fate of these characters, and uh, why do you think, I guess, they, ha they ended up having the fates that they did. Mm, the return? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, in the end of the one, it blew up, kind of. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, I mean, it's really a, a question for David on so many levels, and we would all just be guessing what something meant. Um, but if, for me individually, I felt well, I didn't even find out till after we shoot that he raped her. I mean, I did, it's crazy, you know? So you go into something and you just give everything that you have to give and sometimes you don't have the facts, you know? Um, yes. <laughs> First of all, to paraphrase Kanye West, the great philosopher. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna let y'all finish. I'm talking about Sopranos and Breaking Bad. I'm gonna let y'all finish, but Twin Peaks is the greatest show of all time. <laughs> I'm glad you pulled that back. Yeah, but yes. <laughs> um, my question is spe specifically to start with Kyle because Kyle, you've worked with David the most, um, but then anybody else can answer if you've got something to say. Uh, I'm an aspiring filmmaker director myself, and I just wonder for you guys and Kyle, for you specifically, what is your experience when you as an actor are doing something and 
David wants something different than what you're doing. And he has to talk to you and direct you into what his vision is, what makes him unique in that. He doesn't really talk much. <laughs> um, I mean, I've got to say with David, um, from the beginning, the script is a pretty good blueprint uh, for all of the characters to follow. I don't think anyone, uh, it's pretty clear on what, what, what's going on. And then I think I just trust, and I think we all do, that David uh, sees in us what he wants. It's already there. So we just have to just kind of be who we are. Like you said, you show up and you're yourself, you know, and uh, uh, given the circumstances that you go through, of course, those change things. But David has always been, if, if anything, um, a less is more kind of a director for me. Um, I've spoken a little bit about some of the terminology that he shares with me uh, from time to time to encourage a certain difference and he will, on times, although he doesn't do it that much anymore, say it needs more mystery right, sometimes <laughs> or more Elvis. <laughs> sometimes that's one of my favorites actually. Um, and, uh, or it needs, and then it's always with the hand gesture, a little wind, it needs some wind. You know? <laughs> okay, right. So I just absorb that and, uh, and it changes the next take. Uh, and I'm not really sure how or why, but he always seems to be pleased. So, <laughs> so far so good. <laughs> Before we go to the next question, I do want to say that uh, we do have time for a few more questions, but fear not because we are around, we're in booths, please come meet them and say hello and you can ask more questions if you'd like, but we just have to kind of get, get ready to wrap things up, so go ahead. Hey there, thank y'all so much for being here, this is so cool. <laughs> Uh, I was telling Cheryl Lee yesterday that I'm a school counselor for 10th grade, and I, for Halloween I have a Twin Peaks display in my office. And so one of my students comes in, she's like, why do you have all these owls? Why is there a log there? <laughs> and then she sees where it says Twin Peaks, and she's like, Twin Peaks? I thought that was a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> so I was curious if y'all, any of y'all had ever ate at the Twin Peaks. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Has anybody uh, had the Twin Peaks restaurant? No. Apparently there's H no I've seen them online. Though. It's not licensed, it's not official, but it is no. a Twin Peaks sports bar. Twin Peaks restaurant in San Francisco. Right, that's yours. Yeah. They totally are Twin Peaks restaurants. I heard they, 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 they never got it incorporated. <laughs> or like the name, to own the name and time, and then they open these freaking restaurants. <laughs> my, my grandparents lived in Twin Peaks. When I was doing doing the first season, I showed David Lynch a postcard that was Mr. and Mrs. John Robertson, Twin Peaks, California, and he went, yeah. "Aces." <laughs> Thank God. Let me remove my Twin Peaks braided mask for yeah. this question. Um, obviously, we're all fans of that show. Is there any projects that any of you have worked on as an actor, as a producer, that you wish more people knew about that you want to bring more awareness to? Other projects that you've worked on? Well, I'll just love myself right now. <laughs> I just directed my first feature film. <laughs> you know, we just finished Post. I'm so excited. And um, we'll start hitting the festival circuit. And the name of it is My Name Is. All right. And uh, it's got a very cool um, mental health kind of theme to it, I'm not going to give you too much, but uh, it was really important for us as the filmmakers to tell a mental health story that is not these like stereotypical, uh, I think goes into creating more stigma in Hollywood and showing 
um, somebody's real experience that's, that's diverse and beautiful and complicated. And so please watch out for it. Similar to that, not really. Uh, I did a film over a decade ago, and it's possibly the worst thing you have ever seen <laughs> in your life. We shot it in Egypt, I was kidnapped at one point for four hours, and everything went wrong. And we thought it was buried forever, but the director has somehow clawed it back and has remixed it. Um, and against all of our teams trying to squash it, they are going to release it in Toronto. So uh, watch out for that. And you can count how many times parts of my costume just dissolve. And by the end of the movie, I think I'm really tanned and blonde hair with the start of a redhead, really white skin. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy. Thank you very much. guys are so sweet. This is my story. We were, um, I think because of weather or something, we had to get this shot. And um, what's the sweet lead guy's name? What's his name? James. Yeah. Yes, yes. Roday. So anyway, James knew I was so desperate to see this tennis final. Like he moved it and sent me to the sports bar. He says, just hang out. You can watch the final. And then they ended up not losing me are using me at all that day. It was just a really fun thing, and it was one of the times when a, a, a lot of us got back together, and it was out of his love for the show. Yeah. I remember we were sitting in the bar at the ones, and he had like little cheery eyes, and he's like, I can't believe you're all sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> he was very proud of himself for, for giving us the group he did. Right? Well, and fun for us, because we played husband and wife. Yeah. Yeah. Because we, you know, in two weeks, we didn't have any scenes together. And then I got to meet Cheryl Lee, and you, you and I didn't have scenes together, but it was really special. And then Ray and I... Got, Ray was like, he, we're just reprising the character you've already done on the show. On the show, yeah. 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 And, the, and, and just recently in the, in, uh, the Psych 3 movie, too. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So that was really cool. Now, those two guys are crazy, Jim Rode and Dulé yeah. Hill, and, and they're a lot of fun to work with. And uh, like, like she said, James was a big fan of Twin Peaks, so... He wanted to have us on his show. Because in Twin Peaks, I, of course, was 19, and I was saddled with, like, old, old, old <laughs> men. <laughs> and I was, like, saying to her, I was like, oh, it, I was having to make out, literally, it was written that I was supposed to be making out with, <laughs> with my husband. I was like, really? Do I really have to do that? And then, thankfully, they just had me kissing. So yeah, so the show site, Dual Spires, check that episode out, it's really great to see them all together again. Uh, we are about to wrap up. I do want to recommend one more watch for all of you. Has anybody seen the Beach House music video for Wishes with Ray Elias? It's really incredible. <laughs> it is not your average high school halftime football show. That's all I'm saying. Watch that video. Uh, one thing that I want to say to you before we end is uh, David was quoted as saying, I love Twin Peaks and its world. And right now you're looking at a room that we love Twin Peaks and its world. Thank you. Thank so you, much everybody. For